So uh, let's get to it today. I think the last to... time you would have heard Dave would have been on Vivian's channel the other day. And uh, he was beginning to lay out what he's been guided to do. And among that information was that Dave was going to be withdrawing for a while. I think he mentioned a year's time because of what he's set out to do. Um, I think he pretty much made mention to doing a lot of these types of things um, and that it was going to be rare. So I say that knowing that when he does stop to do them, there's a really important reason why. And I certainly want to hear why he's willing and, and what he has to say. And I also understand that some of this got triggered yesterday after the shift watch episode went up. So um, when I got a response back from Dave yesterday, it was not what I'd expected. And I've always gotten support from Dave. This was to a new elevated level. So I want to hear what you have to say, my friend. And good morning to you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's always fun to sit down and have a chat. And this chat's not going to be any different than a private chat, so we'll just get right with it. Uh, yeah, so I've watched a couple of the shift watches, and, you know, I, how long I've known Ben, so I sort of fast-forwarded some of it because I know what Ben's talking about, even when he's not talking. So he's such a smart guy. Um, it was really fun to see Chris Carter. He was a cool dude, wasn't he? And uh, I remember seeing him up at uh, Bob Potter's gig in Shasta. And uh, Chris is a very helpful, just sort of gentle, loving spirit. And he's very happy-go-lucky. And so I think that uh, for everything that he deserves, the, the one thing that this man deserves the most is just to have a happy, beautiful life. He's just such a great guy. And uh, I've had a couple of nice conversations with, with Chris. So he's a lovely guy. And it was nice to see you do uh, some time with him. And uh, I gave Paula a call this morning to see if she was available. And, you know, Paula and I have been uh, trying to stay in touch, but not, it's, nothing's happened. Um, so the first thing I'd like to cover before we talk about Shift Watch and myself feeling uh, motivated to talk about meditation a little bit, too, which is cool because you nailed that one. If you guys didn't watch Shift Watch uh, and you didn't understand what he was saying about meditation in different stages and going higher up at the level in which you're existing uh, i really urge everybody in your community to go back and watch that and just i think that's the most important part of that whole shift watch that you put up actually and i enjoy the conversation with the other guys but you know me i, I just won't go out and follow other people i don't watch any shows at all uh, i check in on you i check in on baz at ufo matrix uh, UFO Matrix is a top show, and he's one of my best friends. He lives in uh, uh, the Central Mediterranean. Um, such a fabulous, smart guy. The really important thing I wanted to mention was that you know today's today's name. I don't know if you see it, but it's uh, it's incommunicado de UFO. <laughs> and it's, I'm not I'm not talking about it. I told you guys I wasn't going to talk about it. And so uh, before I say the next thing, I'm just going to say uh, it was a real treat to talk to Vivian Chauvet and Jeff Demare. Jeff is a scientist extraordinaire, but he's a, an experiencer of uh, three different species, I believe. And it's all legit. Uh, he had a severe stroke which was uh, disabling and was supposed to keep him in a wheelchair. And he was up and at him after six months. He's had no uh, mental loss. He's had no physical disabilities. Um, and his people came into his room. One of them stayed with him the entire time he was in the hospital. You can follow Jeff in the miracle of his beautiful life uh, by going back through Vivian's channel. But we were so happy to get him back on her show because Vivian and Jeff, are they balance each other. They don't always agree with each other. And when shit's going down and they're trying to get the message of hope out, uh, 
it doesn't always come out the same. So it's really nice to have that that bipole or that dipole relationship where Vivian is an Arcturan for sure, and all she has yes. is love and light. And then what uh, Jeff has is technical data, uh, a life of writing. He's an amazing journalist. He's a published author. He's very successful. And he's just such a brilliant, nice guy. And he's a loving dad and he has a family. And uh, his his special tribe were there and they took care of him. So when they invited me onto the show, uh, I let uh, my friend step in and we had a chat. Um and then after that, my friend came to me later and he said, you know, here's the deal. All of this is going to happen. All of it. The whole program that you've agreed to. So you're going to go do this. You're going to do that. You're going to release this. You're going to share this document. And so what's what's come of this is that Kim Jim has given me extra information for everybody. And so it's really important that I had to get back on and, and finish the story. Um. All right. So I, when I channeled him on Vivian's show, I've never channeled before. So this was fucking off the charts. My heart rate slowed right down. I couldn't feel my arms or my legs. Uh, I was really shaky. And it was really, really beautiful when he stepped away. Before he stepped in, he was cracking jokes with me. And uh, I watched the video. Uh, that Vivian Jeff and I did like three times and I'm just watching myself and it's like yep that's what I was thinking yep that's how I felt because you know I'm a human being I'm not some fucking daddy I'm not trying to be a guru and heal everybody this is just what happened to me so you know please let me get on with my fucking life and but I love him so much so he said he came back and spoke to me two days ago and I, this is, or yeah, this is, yeah, two days ago, right after the thing, Jeff and Vivian, right after the show, because I was exhausted. And so I went straight to bed and I uh, slept for 15 and a half hours, completely uninterrupted. And I've never slept like that before. And I came into work late. It was no big deal. Williams had everything sorted out. So I've had... Even some of the contrary comments, and if there is anything that's commented on her channel, because she has many subscribers, and I, I like the fact that her tribe say it like it is. And there were some that would be deemed as negative, but I just sort of flip-flopped that around, and I just gave the person a whole bunch of love, and I said, hey, you know what? You know, you're right, and it's cool to have an ego, and it's, you know, I'm a lovable dick. I'm not trying to be some effeminate, like, spiritual star. I'm just a dude. And so this person obviously had it up against me. And she said that the 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 channeling did wasn't real. But then, you know, God bless her, because everyone has different types of channeling. And so I totally resonated with what she said, because it's so, so otherworldly to talk about things like this. And it's, you know, so Kim Jim came back, and this is the message. And he said it was okay to go on your show every once in a while as long as you don't talk about us. No ships, no species, no special messages. Everything else is going to be about the program because we need to do some things first. So I only wrote one document already. And this is the one with the sign language for the Air Force. And they're going to love it. I don't care if the guys and girls look at it and laugh and throw it in the round file. What I'm supposed to do is produce it and give it to them. Because that way they can't say they haven't been warned in the friendliest of all possible ways. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I equate that um, process with I've been in corporate environments forever. And I can remember how human resource manuals have refined over time with new protocols because situations have evolved. Right. Protocols. This is a new type of <laughs> evolved event taking place okay, and thank you. no one has really stopped to well, first of all few people understand and have received the protocols so you were chosen for that particular purpose oh yes and i was i was chosen your turn to share oh so, god guys you know, you. Just, 
What I yeah, thank you. It, that was totally mm -hmm. accurate, and thank you for reflecting it back to me because I needed your perspective. Outwardly, I can't see what's happening to me. All right, I can only feel shit. A mirror doesn't do anything for any of us. I mean, it really friggin' doesn't. I mean, I can't see myself and what's happening. So I have to reach out to you and your community. I don't reach out to you because I'm fucking telling you guys something that you need to know. I reach out to you so that I can feel some love, so that I can feel some commitment to the human experience. I'm a human being, and this has been a tremendously fascinating and exhausting trip right and i asked for it to happen i remember on videos that i was doing with you like a year and a half ago i was saying be careful what you wish for i fucking <laughs> mean that dude like this hasn't been like butterflies and birds this isn't butterflies and candy canes this is fucking serious and so it's like it breaks your heart if you don't do it right you hurt yourself if you don't do this right. Who gives a shit about accolades? I'm not receiving any accolades for this. I just have some friends that like me and believe what I say because, you know, God bless them. They've, they've felt and experienced the same freaking thing. So, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about controlling or saying anything to people that are new to the tribe that are arriving because they've opened the door of ascension because it happens at different time levels and time speeds. The Torin ascension, the Torin ascension process was timed to arrive to our generation and those that are younger than us from their, from their mid twenties to their eighties and nineties from their mid twenties to the eighties and nineties, that whole ascension process that began in 2016, right? Yeah. Was to personify the entrance into Aquarius. Right? Here we are. Here we are. And that was an 11 year period, which also fucking coincided with Ben Davidson and the solar cycles. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All of those cycles reset. Oh, God. You've just got 20, to go back. 2012. But it took us about four years for our entire solar system to be bathed in this yeah. new pattern. Yeah. Yes. yes. And and so so to finish Kim Jim's message so that we can move forward, um he said just don't talk about us. Okay, so I wanted he said I could talk about the second document to you guys. And this is not something that I shared with Vivian and Peter because that's not what Ch Kim Jim or Vivian and, and Jeff, because that's not what Kim Jim chose to say. He spoke and chose to say the things that he spoke and chose to say. He repeated things that I was taught to say. He told everybody that I followed the program. All right, the Torrens, the Oranids, Vesta, Vega, Pleiades, Lyra, Andromeda, the galactic sun and the galactic black hole, which I think is a white hole. I think it's a star that produces. I don't think it's a black hole. I believe that the center of our galaxy is a white hole. Those species have been working with us since we fell asleep at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, right after the last Carrington event, they arrived and produced that Carrington event. So to put it in the short terms, he said, don't talk about us, but you can mention this last document. So he's, this is the one that's not been written. And this is why there's another, I have another six months to two years to finish this program. This document, because I don't expect to be going to any Air Force bases until this second document, which is made for the NSA and for Space Force, is written. And I've started the the epilogue. There's a pro. There's an introduction, a prologue, and epilogue. It has my bio and bullet points, which assuredly is not a laughing stock. It's forty important bullet points of things that I've accomplished in my life. 
that will make them sit down and go, hmm, this guy's not an idiot. Let's read the rest of it. That's part of the reason I had the life that I was given. Remember when Kim Jim told me my last, last two lifetimes on earth were so messed up that this one was supposed to be a gift? That's why my life has been so beautiful. So he said that we're going to write it for you. So it means that I'm going to have six months to a year of automatic writing, direct channeling from Taurus. And this is from working with Arcturans. And this is from working with uh, Vesta, Vega, the Pleiades, and Aldebaran, the people from my group in Taurus. This is part of the artif the artificial insemination of intellect. It's like if you're going to be seated to give birth, this is like being seated here to give new thought process to word. So Kim Jim said the last thing I can say about this document, because this is slated for the NSA, who are people that I've never met or worked with, never. And this is slated for people in, in Space Force who I don't work with. I don't really know. I have a lot of Space Force contacts because they like my pie, but I never discuss anything with them because I know that they would never discuss anything with me because it's a, it's against the code of ethics and law. We all have a certain amount of diplomatic promises we have to make when we go into different fields of study. And so those poor boys and girls at SpaceX that have had to sign waivers to not talk about their experience with friends above, you know, there's a lot of that. So you're not allowed to talk for 10 years about anything. And uh, so Kim Jim said that they would be writing this through me. And here's the best part of what he said. He said that it was going to be so powerful a dossier that it would break and crush their hearts and that you will see grown men cry. And that just totally blew me away. And I haven't written it yet. So I've I've, I've done the, the binding. I've done the cover letters. I've done the introduction i've done the bio and you know there's a place where i get it stamped because i have to go for two more security passes that take a while to get my background checks and stuff i mean i've had my federal background check i've had my fbi psychiatrist uh, interview i've had my four years in the civil service with the mendocino county sheriff's department you know god bless them I love those people. And this is, you know, I'm a law enforcement family, a grandfather, and my great great grandfather was Bigfoot Will Wallace. He was the first Texas Ranger. So I, I come from a long line of law enforcement. So all of those things about who I am and who my family is and what we've accomplished and stuff are all very important when you're having a background check done because they want to know everything that you feel, everything that you know. Uh, they want to know what kind of friendships you have, what your favorite football team is, if you've read Alice in Wonderland. They want to know it all. And so it takes a long time to get special permission just to sit down with Congress people and talk to them regularly. And so my goal as a human is to finish this functionary because obviously my friends above can't do the paperwork for me and they can't make the phone calls for me. And so I want to be more self-reliant and I want to be less reliant on other services. So um, I'm doing all of this myself. But in that same sentence, uh, they have also opened some doors for me in Washington, D.C., and they're expecting me to contact them on various levels. And I know that you know that I did a little something with Washington some four or five months back. Yeah, it was back in, was it in May last year? I, yeah, it, yeah timing is like not that. important. But yes, well, I remember no, it, what took it's not place. public. It's not public information, and it was no big deal. So, well, it was starting to be. You know, it was well, all taking place around the time that all these discussions about disclosure were going to take place, and that's yeah. when I realized they reached out to you. I thought, well, maybe here's the point at which so maybe some of this actually takes place, and. It didn't. So here's the here's the real important part about all that 
is that um, because I was able to channel Kim Jim accurately for about 15 minutes, I think, uh, you've seen some of the, the language writing, automatic writing I've done before. Remember that one that looks like a cross between Cambodian and ancient Russian? Yes. Cyrillic. Yes. All right. So it looks like a cross between Cyrillic and, and ancient Cambodian. And it's very interesting because I knocked that big sheet out in front of, was just sitting at the phone with you uh, that day from my kitchen counter. It was a, I think a Sunday afternoon or something. And we were talking and then I showed you the, sent you the pictures and you went, Jesus, you did all that just while we were on the phone. And I, you know, showed you the picture. And then five minutes later, I filled the entire page with writing and then showed it to you. And every symbol, I've gone back over that. And like several of the other ones did right after I was returned home, every symbol of the four, three, four thousand that are put down on there uh, are different. You know, you've got to think, I know you were trying to describe it in terms that we're familiar with, Cerulean, and the, but something tells me, my friend, that this is a language that we're totally unfamiliar with and that you are going to be one of the lenses that helps us focus and understand what that message is. And this is a primer. Oh, yeah. I, in fact, I suspect each species is going to have their own way of communicating vibrationally. And holy cow, let's open up that can of worms. One of the one of the really funny things, one of the really funny things that came forward when Kim Jim was speaking through me on the interview we did was um, she, she got really excited and it got a little perturbed. And he said something like, you know, we're a fourth, I'm a fourth dimensional being. I still need nutrition. I need water. What is this ethereal being? <laughs> you know, he said, I'm in an existence above yours, but I'm still a being. We He's still come physical. To your, we Four come to your planet because we need to drink water. Physical. He goes, what is this? You know, he really <laughs> got into it, but it was fucking hilarious. And so, like, when I snapped out of that, I didn't really remember anything that we talked about. I had to rewatch it to find out what he was saying, because Vivian and Peter were like, Jesus, dude, you really went off the rails. And, uh, you know, so it was fun. Uh, so he said the that what they're going to write is going to be so heartbreaking that it's going to cause a lot of the people that work in those two divisions that I don't know anything about uh, that are very important to black ops in this country. Uh, Truth lands heavy, man. It's going it to lands hard. heavy. And it's funny <laughs> too, because a copy, a copy of the document that they write that I'm putting forward to the NSA and to space force that copy. And don't get me wrong. I love people that work at the Pentagon and the NSA. There's lots of nice people that work there. There's also a lot of weirdos, you know, I was like, it's like any corporation or any military structured uh, position. You're going to have wackos and you're going to have really nice people too. It's like any job. It's just at a different level. And so, you know, not everything coming out of there is black syrup. You know, nice. people get over it. We're all human beings, you know. And this is, you know, months ago, I got so pissed off at community because it was like, stop acting like fucking ascension is only meant for us. This is meant for all humans. And, you know, get off the stage, stop talking shit, and reach out to people who need it. So our government needs help. And so my words became a reality. And now I'm, I'm turning to taking an olive branch to the U.S. government because I fucking love my country. There are good people that work for yeah, the government. Right. You know, and it's funny, too, because Kim Jim was talking about, you know, corporeal beings. And this came up in a conversation that he also started because he said David was told about the four main aspects of reality, time, like gravity, and sound. Why are you giving them money for, for matter, space, and energy? He said, that's a joke. He called it phony science. He said, that's phony science. It was hilarious what he said. <laughs> so you got to watch it. It's just like, fuck, I got to turn it into like an adult cartoon book. But well, that so was said, the part of the the conversation. I heard right? the entirety of the channeling that you were there oh, with. 
It's going to be bitching. I can see a subscription for High Times Magazine, and I'll just put in a cartoon strip every once in a while about my contact with Taurus. And, you know, thank God for Bud. It really helps me bring my ass back down to earth. So, But everything's been really real, so we're keeping it real. So when that document's done, I'm not going to be talking about them for up to two years, and that's it. He's asked me absolutely zero. So that was it. I, I won't ever be mentioning the shit again. And and just wish me luck, wish me a lot of luck. So, but this other stuff going on, like meditation, and you touched on something very deep and meaningful for all of us who want to meditate, all of us who have to find the time to do it. You know, a lot of us have children, a lot of us are single parents, a lot of us will have four or five pets that we've rescued, and then we have our, you know, our potted plants on the windowsill that we have to water. So it's like, there's always something to do. And so why don't you um, tell me what you do? Because I know you've been really, really busy writing and you've actually done some healing and you've done some deep thinking. Why don't you tell me what you're doing to find the time uh, to slip into TM and why it's changed for you? Because, you know, it's really finding that time for me. I'm so damn busy and it's, you know, shit I like doing. I, I make myself busy. All right, that's it. Well, you listed off all the three-dimensional responsibilities that you hold in your space all at once. And that's a lot. I see what's happened with me, uh, you know, since my last gig in Baton Rouge consulting. And uh, my family's grown. Uh, my wife has moved on. Um uh, I'm not in one place anymore. So for me to be able to be able to go where I want to go and do what I want to do and you see where the universe is going to lead me, I'm in a perfect position to be able to do that. And most others are not. When I began this <laughs> quest for meditation over my life, it had been something that I had a curiosity about. And you're just too busy. When I think about when it occurred to me then, I was running a hotel, I had a family, my kids were involved in activities. And so, you know, I was plugged into that. Once that was behind me, and it was really at the point that the TIA had kicked in. And now um, there's a 30 day period, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to just recover. And when the surgeon mentioned that one of the methods of recovery and therapy might be meditation, I thought, well, here's four week purpose that's perfect. There were no demands on my time. I had exactly the amount of time I needed to devote to that practice. And when I think about the time I give to meditation, it's just part of me now. The remark I had made on Shift Watch was that now that I've started to talk to some people I hadn't met before and we talk about their vibration levels and they're all, kind of all over the place, I can see how bringing them back to a place where they can feel grounded so that they can explore these other places and multidimensional experiences. You just need to be able to quiet yourself long enough to be able to do that. That's just part and parcel of who I am now. And it took me, like George Harrison said, it was a gradual process. When you finally achieve the point at which you, you live in that state, you don't recognize it until you finally get there. During the initial times when I began to learn how to meditate, oh man, there were times I could find that quiet spot and connect to that field of probabilities and leave my intent behind and just see where it would take you. But it wasn't regular. Oh, it didn't yeah. happen every time. You know, Over that's great. months, however, it did. And so now when I wake up in the morning, every morning, the first 20 minutes is devoted to just that mindset and meditation. And so, man, you just feel so good from there that the rest of the day is going to unfold from there. Right. But now so I recognize that we always speak from the level that we're at. And yeah. now when I've um, observed, and part of my job is to be a recorder of what I've observed, 
when I see what's going on with others, I can tell that the work for everybody to achieve these meditative states is not really complete yet. And it's just time to bring that in. I took it for granted because I'm here. I grew into this and I, I really can't tell you the methods that I use to do it. But meditation and quieting myself was the key to unlocking access to everything else that followed. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go there and agree with you. I think that's a very powerful doorway of one of the many truths of existence. Absolutely. Because, you know, and, and just to, to, to look back at what you said uh, about the Beatles and George Harrison, uh, that was George that brought the Maharishi forward. And uh, thank God for that. I mean, I was introduced to uh, Indian mysticism through the Maharishi in 1970. Right. And so it's, it was all something that touched our lives very deeply, especially being, you know, in the contrivance of the U.S. regime in 1970. We're just trying to get out of Vietnam and, and the hippies were still around to save us. Right. Because I used to shoot yeah. up to I used to shoot up to the hate in the city, you know, go to hate Ashbury and look at the people with flowers in their hair. And, you know, when I got a little bit older, I'd take a tab and, you know, we go down to the Presidio. We go to the Palisade of Fine Arts there under the dome. And we'd all be playing recorders. You know, it was just such a beautiful thing. You know, I spent those days with flowers in my hair, too. It was beautiful. And I'd enjoy life. I embrace life. So the many messages that you receive through meditation and the ease in which you're now able to enter into that version of the truth. Because versions don't have to be any kind of falsehood. A version can just be another way to say facet. You know, it's a facet, like you look at a diamond with its many facets. And, the, and, and all the facets, it's still a diamond. Every facet is still the diamond. So, you know, meditation is an entrance into that yeah. facet of reality. And it's part of the true light. It's part of the true love. And uh, Yeah, I'm yeah. not holding this out as the only way to achieve this level. All I can tell you is that it worked for me, and the process was as simple as it would sold to me. And apparently... It has been that simple for millions of people everywhere. You just have to give it the appropriate amount of time and attention. And that needs to be part of your lifestyle. Yeah. Once it and, is, you know, I promise you, you will, you'll get results. Oh, sure. And then, you know, but you're, you're preaching the converted. And in this case, you know, it's not my last podcast from Star Chat. So indefinitely, we're talking to everybody in Tribe here, folks. So please engage. Uh, <laughs> so let's go back to something else you just said. Uh, and uh, it was about speaking from that higher level, you know, because we're all at a higher level. So we're all, and this is, do you remember the other day or when we did the last interview together and I took my fingers and I sort of waved them up and down and pointed them at each other. So sometimes we're on that wavelength. Sometimes we're not on that wavelength. But we're still all at a higher level. And when you go down to a lower level, because human beings only have up and down, sideways, forward and back to describe our third dimensional thinking. So there is no lower level, you see. So there's never a level of somebody below us. We're all at a higher level because the people that have now awakened to the truth of the true light and not listening to diatribe and not following lies and only following their heart. And that's the lesson here. Just follow your heart. So even the people that have just woken up yesterday who have just finally discovered the word ascension, you know, God bless them. And, and they're no lower than where we're at just because we've had contact with different species or contact with ourself. Why don't we just say that? We've finally contacted ourselves and and we are our higher selves now and and you're at your higher self and goddamn isn't it great when our energies connect and we can all understand each other. I think that's the yeah. big deal right there. That's the big banana. And so you know, the I'm, pace of all of our journeys was designed to be different. We weren't learning each other's lessons. We'll share them later. But, but we're all no here way. to do something yeah. different. 
Yeah, there's no way to learn uh, someone else's lesson while you're learning your own. That's crowding. Yeah. That's that's intellectual and spiritual crowding. You can't let two lessons in at the same time. What are you, a fucking bodhisattva? So it's like <laughs> I'm just the I'm just a human. Just give me the facts, ma'am, one at a time, yeah. please. You know, and that's part of the experience of waking up is to being with people that you think you want to be, or being with people when you're asking yourself, how come they're so happy. How come they're smiling? How come they're so talented? How come they play instruments? How come they dance? How come they're all beautiful to look at, right? And it's kind of like, yeah, because we're beautiful. You know, we're beautiful children of the earth. We're beautiful children of the stars. And this is who we are. And it's like, that's why people are attracted to who we are is because we're close to mother nature. And that's where all people inherently know they need to be. They're just caught up in the act, you know? So it's like, drop out of the act, man. You know, tune in. Turn off and drop out. Yeah, baby, far out. I'm in, but I've been here for a while. Yeah, well, now, now is you're right the here. time that clarity is showing up, though. You had made a point, and I want to kind of underscore it again, that until tribe shows up, we can't really share any of these new revelations with anybody to help us get any perspective. Because these are all new conditions, all. And who's there to kind of help us along? That's what the tribe is here for. Sometimes yeah. when we cross paths, we have a perspective to offer. Sometimes we don't. But the tribe is smart enough to stay in their lane and tell you that. They'll tell yeah. you when they don't know what they don't know, but they'll offer you well, know, a perspective. I, you know, yeah. what, whatever, whatever tribe is, I mean, it's like, you know, because we were just talking before we fired up the camera, dude, I was saying it's like, yeah, let's, you know, let's fucking let's get naked and paint our bodies and fucking light up the bonfire and make a lot of drumming and dance around the damn thing because I'm still tribe. I'm a human being. You know, we were talking about anthrop anthropology and evolutionary changes. We talked about vestigial tails and why apes have no tail or they just have a vestigial tail. Some of the attributes that we have as human beings are vestigial. They come from our primordial self when we came from a pond. And I remember going back and talking about chromosomes and how we developed and how intervention has come and how our species has been changed or how we've changed ourselves. Right. So I that's feel where like it goes. We're, we're digressing to protozoa. And I don't know that that was the conversation we wanted well, to that's, have. That's where, it, that, that's where it goes for me because I, I never use the word can't. I never use right. the word can't. And I, I just don't, whether I'm trying to describe something or somebody else, it's on my list of thoughts or things, words to not repeat. So I don't, re you know, negatively train my subconscious, anything like no, won't, can't, shouldn't, hate, all those words. I just don't use them anymore. So I always you come know, up there with was, uh, Last else. night I was talking about, or thinking about our conversations and what really changed in me to open myself up to things that I didn't have any frame of reference before and would tend to rule out it was when i began to ask myself well what if that was true what if that happened when i started to consider those perspectives that's when those thoughts showed up and what i was supposed to learn from it revealed itself to me uh, but that's what i'm grateful for Right. Right. Yeah, I, I dig it. And, you know, gratitude is nine tenths of law, you know, and it's funny, too, because whatever, whatever high level you're at of ascension and whatever high level you're at in your ability to want to meditate or to finally meditate, uh, whatever you want to communicate, it's here's the reason why everything that everyone's going through is important because it joins us together by the th the strings, the threads, the ropes, and the chains of our hearts. We can bring our hearts together. And my, you know, final conclusion of my entire experience with people from the, the sky is that they only want us to be happy and have joy. They only want us to find our hearts and listen to them. And they want us to be loving to each other. All of us, all of us. And if all of us were shown the proper love when we were tiny babies, then we would never do the terrible things that we do while we're adults because we're still broken, hurt little babies. And so this is the sadness, the human sadness of the human condition. And 
being at the high level that everyone's at here in Ascension, you know, because, you know, there's been a time where I dip my toe, I dig Ascension land, you know, I am in Ascension, I feel it very powerfully, because Ascension also describes the continuance of going further up into oh, higher, yeah. into higher intellectual <laughs> thought, higher spiritual development, higher, higher feelings of love. And this is the thing about love. True love is so giving that whenever you feel it, you feel it more powerfully than the time you did before. And that's why love will be around forever, right? That's why, you know, thoughts of attrition and terrible things and the terrible things that happen on this planet right now, and we know they're happening and we want to see them going away. We see them as going away and they will go away because we will love everybody on this planet and we will show them how to love themselves and how to spread that joy and that love to everybody else. So that's what that's what I learned from the whole experience. And when so you very... feed your energy to those endeavors, the others just fall away. When you don't pay any attention to them, they're not there. Absolutely. You just you're touching my heart right now, bro. And I'm gonna hold back the tears on this. Because they, you know, no matter how stupid we behave and how thoughtless we become in our endeavors through our day and how foolish we are at times. It's um, it's all going to be okay because we all have this this chance to redeem ourselves and to love ourselves and to s stop being naughty, stop being bad, stop being foolish, stop being selfish, and start being loving one hundred percent of the time. And that's the that's the key note to all the energy fields because love will be eternal. And when you are living in love, then you can live forever. Well, it's expansive, the way that you were describing it a while. It's not that when you take another um, dose of love, you never lose that. You just continue to build upon that. And now you can understand how your light continues to bright, bright, it's, shines brighter, wider. Right. You know, and it's yeah. so, so, be so beautiful because, um, I learned that we were all made from light and we're also all made from crystals. Some of us are all made from water. Some of us are all made from mist. Some of us are all made from stone. It's so beautiful what we're made from. And, you know, when we transfer into the next reality through the transference of either uh, stepping away from this corporeal form, the spirit that we walk away, we still have a loving fondness for all the experiences that we've had the bad ones, the terrible things that have happened to all of us. We've all had something awful happen to us as part of the human condition. And then transmuting that into love and kindness and caring and understanding. So then when we walk away, you go forward as a crystal being, as a crystal entity into Lemuria. You know, I go as a, as a light being back to Taurus. All right, because I'm different. You're different. Right. When we, when we find our family, we find our tribe, right? Then we share our tribe with that tribe, with this tribe, with those tribes. Yeah, right? so we're, we just continue to connect everybody to this hub. Yeah. Right. Right. So all of the realities are that, that we discuss, they're all in existence. They're all beautiful and they're all full of love and light from the... You know, I, I have a hard time being monotheistic or believing in, in one single divine creator. And I know that's really important to all the Masons out there is that you believe in a, one single divine creator. I, I can't just use that word because those words of man are not big enough. And so the right. like, like my, you know, our friend Asher was down visiting a couple of days ago, such a lovely soul. Uh, and, you know, I, we had a laugh because I said, when we use the right words to describe the, the, the divinity of creation and living within creation and existing and thinking and feeling within creation, it has to sound sort of like Capella Antigua, right? Some like beautiful 14th century medieval church hymn, because it's just got to be the most ethereal, beautiful thing. And I was thinking of uh, uh, Guillaume de Marchaud. The, the medieval French composer, Guillaume de Marchaud, he did a, a, a piece of music called La Fête de Laine, The Feast of Fools. And it's found on uh, Harmonia Mundi, I believe is a West German record company. 
they do a lot of really top classical recordings. But Lafayette the Lane is such a joy and is back in the uh, 11th, 12th, and 13th century in medieval Europe when they would have a huge spring harvest festival and they take it into the church, which was the log house, the single room. Every country and every tribe had one. You know, whether you're Viking or French or German, everybody had a long house made of logs or stone and they'd all go into it. And those eventually transferred into churches when the Romans came in, they turned them all into churches, stuck a cross on top of them. That's why churches are the way they are. But uh, these long houses that all tribe would gather into back in the 10th century would be festooned with fruit and wine and mead and honey and flowers and uh, people dressed in plants and, and farm animals, and they'd bring them in. And so in this piece by Guillaume de Marchaux, La Fête de Lane, the Feast of Fools, is where they play the hurdy-gurdies and the cornettos and all the fabulous ouds and all the beautiful 12th, 13th, 14th century instruments. And they sing in Capella Antigua, which is beautiful medieval Latin French. And uh, then the jackass would be enticed to get on his back legs and dance the room. And so it would be the Feast of Fools, and they'd be eating and celebrating, and they'd bring in the ass and play music, and it was a big loving expression of spring, renewal, and community. So we've always been here. The tribe has always been here. They will never get rid of us. And so I urge everyone to check out La Fête de Laine by Guillaume de Marchaux. And uh, what a fabulous piece of music that is. And it's available on YouTube. You just punch it in and Boy, is that going to blow your mind. And I urge everyone who wants to feel the love of whatever this divine creation is, it must be in part of that music. Because when I hear it, I see the universe. I see stars. And I see the very beginning of all of us. And we're all always going to be together. This is the unity of spirit. This is why you're a special soul, Lowell. Because you have a group of people that are just like us. They understand love, they understand things are tough, and they understand that that's the battle, that's the fight. Stay full of joy, stay full of happiness, and love each other. I feel like we came to where we were supposed to conclude. Yeah, I felt the love, man. It's been good. 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 Thank you. Thanks for the follow-up. Um, and thank you for clearing up that we're not ever going to hear not from Dave for a while. There'll just be places where, uh, when it's appropriate for him to share what he's got, we'll still hear from him. He's not going anywhere. Well, I'm going to all kinds of places. So I won't say I'm not going anywhere. It's, you know, thoughts of things. But uh, I'm going everywhere, man. I'm going to other planets. I'm going to Washington. Uh, just call me Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. But I wanted to say uh, I love you. I love our community. Um, I may not be back in a week or two. You know, it's just what's whatever thing's going. It was just an opportunity because I know Kim Jim came in and he asked me to say those final things is that I won't be discussing other species anymore. And I'm uh, grateful to provide a platform for you to be able to share that stuff with us because Kim Jim has provided information for me that was meant for me in the past. And I'm grateful to him as well. Right. Um, the thing that I think was really fortunate about the whole experience is that um, when I was brought into Ascension and then taken off the planet and given instructions and given healing, and give it an opportunity to express my humanity to 2,000 different ambassadors from around the galaxy. I had to prove that, you know, there's hope. And there and is. There is. For sure. We are in a world of hope yeah. and love. And just see it. See it and use those words daily. Use those words daily. All right. I love you. Love you too, buddy. Thanks so much. Chat. Right. We'll Talk chat again soon. Yeah, ciao. Ciao.